A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to Hindi newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 2nd of June 2022. Displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. Without any delay, let's get into the article discussion. See this news article here. It mentions about a ruling by the National Green Tribunal. See the NGT which is the National Green Tribunal has provided direction to the Coastal Aquaculture Authority regarding the violation of Coastal Aquaculture Authority Act 2005 So before seeing the news let us know about this act and the violations regarding it We'll see this but first of all the syllabus relevant to the article is given here for your reference please go through it Now let us start our discussion See, it is an act enacted to provide for the establishment of an authority for regulating the activities connected with coastal aquaculture in the coastal areas and matters related to it. So, this is nothing but an act which provides for the establishment of an authority. And what does this authority do? It regulates the activities connected with coastal aquaculture in coastal areas. And what is this authority? The authority established is the Coastal Aquaculture Authority (CAA). But first what is coastal aquaculture see in aquaculture aqua refers to aquatic organisms and culture or culturing means breeding rising and harvesting so in general terms aquaculture is breeding rising and harvesting of aquatic organisms such as fish shellfish and aquatic plants see basically it's farming in water and also know that around 580 aquatic species are currently farmed all over the world Such farming involves interventions in the rearing process to enhance the production. See according to Food and Agriculture Organization, aquaculture is probably the fastest growing food producing sector and it accounts for 50% of the world's fish that is used for food. See this is a data you can use it in your mains answer. Now coming to the benefits, aquaculture has several benefits. See it is an environmentally responsible source of food and commercial products. It also helps to create healthier habits and more importantly aquaculture is also used to rebuild the stocks of threatened or endangered species. So these are all the benefits. You should note that aquaculture can be undertaken in both coastal areas and inland areas. And the act which is the Coastal Aquaculture Authority Act 2005 deals with the ones carried out in the coastal areas which is called the coastal aquaculture. So as per the act coastal aquaculture is the culturing of shrimp prawn fish or any other aquatic life in saline or brackish water only See this is a very crucial point here it covers only culturing in saline or brackish water it does not cover fresh water aquaculture See the aquatic life is cultured under controlled conditions in ponds pens enclosures or other coastal areas So this is about the culturing of the aquatic life and in this manner the main objective of the authority is to promote sustainable development of coastal aquaculture in coastal areas without causing damage to the coastal environment and it also ensures that the concept of responsible coastal aquaculture is followed and overall the livelihood of various sections of people living in the coastal areas are protected so these are all the responsibilities of authority to promote sustainable development and to prevent the damage to coastal environment and to ensure responsible coastal aquaculture and to protect the livelihood of people living in coastal areas see the crucial point here is that the coastal area means only those areas declared as the coastal regulation zone by the government of india As you know since the year 1991 Union Ministry of Environment notifies certain coastal stretches as CRZ that is coastal regulation zone through a CRZ notification and this is done under section 3 of Environment Protection Act 1986 so the CRZ notification is released under the act Environment Protection Act 1986 So such a CRZ area is based on two demarcations namely high tide line and low tide line. See high tide line in this picture means the line on the land up to which the highest water line reaches during the spring tide. So this is the highest point up to which the water reaches. See here the red line is the high tide line and the blue line is the low tide line. I hope you understand the meaning of it. And additionally here I have given which area is declared as CRZ that is coastal regulation zones so just go through it see CRZ is declared to protect coastal environment 
and marine areas and also to regulate developmental activities along the coastal areas so the main objective are these two to protect the environment and to regulate the developmental activities and therefore there are restrictions on industries operations and processes in the crz area and to simplify the restrictions crz is further subclassified as crz 1 2 3 and 4 by the crz notifications so in each of these sub zones only certain activities are permitted and regulated and others are prohibited unfortunately aquaculture activities are prohibited in the crz by the crz notifications See, it is unfortunate that aquaculture activities are prohibited as per the CRZ notifications, but aquaculture is a viable and sustainable economic activity for the coastal population. Then the CAA Act was enacted in order to regulate the coastal aquaculture. For such regulation, the Act mandates compulsory registration of aquaculture activities under its Section 13, and if not registered, such an activity is a punishable offence under Section 14. and along with this section 138 prohibits coastal aquaculture in certain areas and it is prohibited within 20 meters from the high tide line and it is prohibited in creeks rivers and backwaters within the crz but note that there is an exception to this if the coastal aquaculture existed before the enactment of the act then it is allowed plus traditional coastal aquaculture activity in the crz area is allowed but with registration and it has to undergo regulation as per the crz notification so these are the exception what are those if the aquaculture existed before the enactment of the act that is before 2005 then it is allowed and the traditional coastal aquaculture activities are also allowed but with registration and they also have to undergo regulation as per the crz notifications so with this information now let us see what is the news see what has happened in tamil nadu illegal prawn culture activities were being taken near a water body that is prior approval and registration was not done see the water body is a part of palaverkadu bird sanctuary and it is close to pulikat lake we know that pulikat lagoon system is a ramsar site of international importance right and it is also a protected area and additionally due to the ecologically fragile nature of the pulikat lake through a notification central government extended the coastal area of lake up to a distance of 2 meters so in case of pulikat lake the crz zone is up to 2 kilometers so keeping these facts in mind national green tribunal has asked the caa that is the coastal aquaculture authority to enforce the legislation strictly and also asked to remove the illegal coastal aquaculture activities that were carried out without registration or which were in violation of the caa act so that is all about the article given here In this article discussion we saw what is aquaculture it refers to breeding raising and harvesting of aquatic organisms see basically it is farming in water and after that we saw several benefits of aquaculture it is an environmentally responsible source of food it helps to create healthier habits and aquaculture is used to rebuild the stocks of threatened or endangered species and after that we saw the main objectives of authority which is to promote sustainable development of coastal aquaculture and to protect coastal environment from damage and to ensure responsible coastal aquaculture and to protect the livelihoods of various sections of people in coastal areas and after that we moved on to see about crz notification we saw what is high tide line and what is low tide line We saw that coastal aquaculture is prohibited within 200 meters from high tide line and it is also prohibited in creeks rivers and backwaters and we finally ended our discussion by seeing an exception which is the coastal aquaculture which existed before the enactment of the act is allowed and the traditional aquaculture is allowed in the CRZ area with registration and it also has to undergo regulation with these points in mind now let us move on to the next article discussion See this article here it talks about the SNP Global India Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index survey See the survey says that for the 11th month in a row India's manufacturing PMI reflected an expansion See the prices are already rising in addition to this the firms signaled that there will be further rise in the prices due to increase in input cost See the input cost are increasing due to the increased prices for electronic components energy freight food stuff metals and textiles 
The S&P Global India Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index survey also noted that the manufacturing sector jobs grew for the second month in a row owing to ongoing improvements in sales. And this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us revise about PMI. So, what is PMI? PMI refers to the Purchasing Managers Index. And what does it indicate? It is an indicator of economic health of manufacturing and service sectors. See, the PMI data was compiled and constructed by IHS Market Economics. As of 2022, IMS Market merged with the S&P Global. So, this year's PMI was released by S&P. See, this Purchasing Managers Index provides an accurate and a timely set of data to understand industry conditions. See, this data, it is useful for the business decision makers and purchasing professionals to plan their purchase orders accordingly. So, in a sense, the PMI acts as an indicator of business activity, economic health and investor sentiments. See, the data used for compiling the index is based on certain variables tracked by the IHS market economics. And this tracking of data is not direct, but through surveys. So, PMI is a survey-based index that tracks the perception of the responders. See, the key features of this purchasing managers index are that it is released on a monthly basis and it is not revised after publication. There are two PMI released for India. One is for the manufacturing sector, another is for the service sector. In case of the manufacturing, the index monitors five variables. The variables monitored include output, new orders, stock levels, employment and prices. Of these five variables, the new orders has the highest weightage. Now moving on to the service sector. In case of the service sector, PMI monitors variables such as business activity, new business, backlogs of work, prices charged, input prices, employment and expectations for activity. So these are the variables that are monitored in case of manufacturing and service sector. And note that the PMI is a number from 0 to 100. In this, the PMI above 50 represents an expansion when compared to the previous month. Likewise, PMI under 50 represents a contraction. And a PMI of 50 indicates no change in the economy. See, the article mentioned that PMI for May month 2022 is 54.6. So, the Indian economy is expanding. Now, that's all regarding this article. In this article discussion, we saw what is PMI. PMI is Purchasing Managers Index. It is an indicator of economic health for manufacturing and service sector. And it is released by SNP. It provides an accurate and timely set of data to understand the industry conditions. And we saw that PMI is a survey-based index that tracks the perception of the responders. And it acts as an indicator of business activity, economic health and investor sentiments. And we saw the key features of the Purchasing Managers Index. See, for manufacturing sector, the variables monitored include output, new orders, stock levels, employment and prices. And for the service sector, the variables monitored are business activity, new business, backlogs of work, prices charged, input prices, employment and expectations for activity. So, from this, we concluded that there are two types of PMI. See, PMI is a number from 0 to 100. PMI above 50 represents expansion, below 50 represents contraction and a PMI of 50 indicates no change in the economy. And with these points in mind, now let us move on to the next article discussion. Look at this news article. This news article talks about the appointment of 8 new High Court judges. Also, the article mentions about the Law Ministry's notification. In that notification, the appointment of seven judicial officers from Bihar as judges of the Patna High Court is mentioned. And also it mentions the elevation of four additional judges of the Kerala High Court as permanent judges. And this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us quickly revise about the appointment and removal procedures of High Court judges. See, the Chief Justice and Judges of High Courts are to be appointed by the President. Now, let us see about the appointment procedure. Know that Chief Justice must consult two of his senior most colleagues on the bench and this is regarding the suitability of names proposed for the appointment of High Court Judges. See, all consultation must be in writing and after this, these opinions must be sent to the Chief Minister along with the recommendations. And this is the procedure. 
However, if the chief minister desires to recommend the name of any person, then what should be done? See, at this situation, chief minister should forward the name to the chief justice for consideration. And also, a copy of chief justice proposal should simultaneously be sent to the governor. And this is because the governor is bound by the advice of the chief minister heading the council of ministers. And similarly, a, a copy thereof may also be endorsed to the Chief Justice of India and Union Minister of Law, Justice and Company Affairs. Here note that the Governor as advised by the Chief Minister should forward his recommendation to the Union Minister of Law, Justice and Company Affairs as early as possible. And that is not later than 6 weeks from the date of receipt of the proposal from the Chief Justice of the High Court. And after this, it is sent to the Chief Justice of India and the Collegium of two Judges of the Supreme Court. Then they would take into account the views of the Chief Justice of High Court and of those Judges of the High Court who have been consulted by the Chief Justice. And also they will take the views of those Judges in the Supreme Court who are conversant with the affairs of that High Court. Then within three weeks, the recommendation of the Chief Justice of India is sent to the Prime Minister. The PM will advise the President in the matter of appointment. And as soon as the appointment is approved by the President, the Secretary to the Government of India in the Department of Justice will inform the Chief Justice of High Court. And also, a copy of the communication will be sent simultaneously to Chief Minister of the State. And then finally, when the warrant of appointment is signed by the President, the Secretary to the Government of India in the Department of Justice will announce the appointment and they will issue the necessary notification in the Gazette of India. So this is the appointment procedure. Now let us see the procedure involved in the removal of the High Court judges. See a judge of High Court can be removed from his office by a presidential order. This is done only after an address by the parliament has been presented to him in the same session for such removal. The address must be supported by a special majority of the house which means a majority of total membership of that house and majority of not less than two-thirds of the members present in voting. So this is the majority. Now what are all the grounds for removal? See there are two grounds of removal which is proved misbehavior or incapacity. Thus a judge of high court can be removed in the same manner and on the same grounds as a judge of supreme court. The Judges' Enquiry Act 1968 regulates the procedure relating to the removal of a High Court judge. And this is regulated by the process of impeachment. Now what are all the steps involved in this impeachment? Firstly, a removal motion must be signed by 100 members if it is in the case of Lok Sabha or it should be signed by 50 members if it is in the case of Rajya Sabha. It should be signed and it should be given to the Speaker or Chairman. Speaker in the case of Lok Sabha, Chairman in the case of Rajya Sabha. Now secondly, the Speaker or Chairman may admit the motion or refuse to admit it. This is the second step. Now thirdly, if it is admitted, then the Speaker or Chairman is to constitute a three-member committee to investigate into the charges. Note that the committee should consist of Chief Justice or Judge of Supreme Court, a Chief Justice of High Court and a Distinguished Jurist. If the committee finds the judge to be guilty of misbehavior or suffering from an incapacity, the House can take up the consideration of the motion. Then after the motion is passed by each of the House of the Parliament by special majority, an address is presented to the President for removal of the judge. Now finally, after the address is presented, the president passes an order removing the judge. Now from this process, it is clear that the procedure for the impeachment of a judge of the High Court is same as that of the judge of the Supreme Court. Now that's all about the appointment and the removal procedures for judges of High Court. See, in this discussion, we saw Chief Justice and the judges of High Court ought to be appointed by the president. But President consults Chief Justice of India and Chief Justice of India consults two of his senior most colleagues on the bench. See, President also consults Governor and the Governor is advised by the Chief Minister of that particular state. Now, after the list is finalized and it is sent to the Union Minister of Law, Justice and Company Affairs, Prime Minister will advise the President in the matter of the appointment. See, don't get confused here with whom are all consulted and who are all involved, which department is involved. What you have to know is, President appoints the Chief Justice and Judges of the High Court and uh, he also consults Chief Justice of India, who in turn consults two senior most judges of the Supreme Court and President also consults the Governor. 
This is in case of appointment of Chief Justice of High Court. If it is a judge of the High Court, Chief Justice of that High Court is also consulted. So this is as simple as that. Now coming to the removal procedure, a judge of the High Court is removed in the same manner and on the same grounds as a judge of the Supreme Court. The process is called impeachment and it involves a removal motion signed by 100 members if it in the case of Lok Sabha and 50 members if it is in the case of Rajya Sabha. And this motion is given to speaker or chairman. They may admit or refuse to admit it. If they admit the motion, three member committee is formed to investigate the charges. The three member committee consists of chief justice or a judge of Supreme Court, chief justice of High Court and a distinguished jurist. If the committee finds the judge to be guilty, the House take up the motion and the motion is passed by each House of the Parliament by a special majority. Special majority here is majority of total membership of the House and majority of not less than two-thirds of the members present in voting. And finally, the address is presented to the President for the removal of judge and the President passes an order removing the judge. That's all about this article. See, what you have to do here is, we saw that the removal procedure for High Court and Supreme Court are the same. But the appointment procedure for Supreme Court is different. You go and find out what is the appointment procedure for the judges and chief justice of Supreme Court. Now, with this note, now let us move on to the next article discussion. Look at this news article. This news article states that Tamil Nadu Chief Secretary chaired a meeting to review the preparedness for the Southwest Monsoon. The meeting was attended by heads of different departments yesterday. He highlighted the short-term, medium-term and long-term initiatives needed to avoid the impact of disasters. He ordered the removal of blockages in drains and he asked the officials to keep the community halls ready for accommodating affected people. He also stressed on the need for all the departments to work together in coordination. And this is all about the news article. In this context, we will revise about monsoon in prelims perspective. See, climate, it refers to the sum total of weather conditions and variations over a large area for a long period of time, usually more than 30 years. We all very well know that the climate of India is described as monsoon type. The word monsoon is derived from the Arabic word mausam, which literally means season. Monsoon refers to the seasonal reversal in the wind direction during a year. See, the climate of India is strongly influenced by monsoon winds. The sailors who came to India in historic times were one of the first to have noticed the phenomenon of the monsoon. They benefited from this reversal of wind system as they came by sailing ships at the mercy of winds. See, the Arabs, who had also come to India as traders, named this seasonal reversal of wind system as monsoon. And know that the monsoons are experienced in the tropical area roughly between 20 degree north and 20 degree south latitude. And with this basic information, now let us understand the factors influencing monsoon formation in India. See, this is very important for your examination. Firstly, the differential heating and cooling of land and water creates low pressure on the landmass of India while the seas around experience comparatively higher pressure. So the land has low pressure and seas have high pressure. And this is because of the differential heating and cooling of land and water. Now secondly, the shift of the position of intertropical convergence zone in summer over Ganga plain. See, the intertropical convergence zone, that is the ITCZ, is nothing but the region that circles the earth near the equator, where the trade winds of the northern and southern hemispheres come together. So, this shift is another factor that influences monsoon formation. Now, thirdly, the presence of high pressure area east of Madagascar, approximately at 20 degrees south latitude over the Indian Ocean. See, the intensity and position of this high pressure area affects the Indian monsoon. So, this is the third factor that influences the Indian monsoon formation. Now, fourthly, the Tibetan plateau gets intensely heated during summer. And this results in strong vertical air currents and the formation of low pressure over the plateau at about 9 km above the sea level. This is another factor. Finally, the movement of the westerly jet stream to the north of the Himalayas and the presence of tropical easterly jet stream over the Indian Peninsula during summer affects monsoon. So, these are all the five factors that affects or influences monsoon formation in India. See, so, know that monsoon are not steady winds but are pulsating in nature. 
it is affected by different atmospheric conditions encountered by it on its way over the warm tropical seas see the duration of the monsoon is between 100 to 120 days from early june to mid september every year we have seen that around the time of its arrival the normal rainfall increases suddenly and continues constantly for several days and this is known as the burst of the monsoon the monsoon arrives at the southern tip of indian peninsula generally by the first week of june then it proceeds into two branch which is the arabian sea branch and the bay of bengal branch the arabian sea branch reaches mumbai about 10 days later on approximately 10th of june the bay of bengal branch also advances rapidly and arrives in assam in the first week of june see the lofty mountains causes the monsoon winds to deflect towards the west over the ganga plains by mid june the arabian sea branch of the monsoon arrives over saurashtra and kutch and the central part of the country so the bay of bengal branch is moving towards west and the arabian sea branch is moving towards north that is from the tip of indian peninsula to the central part of the country then the arabian sea and the bay of bengal branches of the monsoon merge over the northwestern part of the ganga plains see delhi generally receives the monsoon showers from the bay of bengal branch by the end of the june by the first week of july western uttar pradesh punjab haryana eastern rajasthan experience monsoon and by mid july the monsoon reaches himachal pradesh and the rest of the country So this is about the spread of the Indian monsoon in the country. Now coming to the withdrawal or the retreat of the monsoon, it is a more gradual process. See the withdrawal of the monsoon begins in the northwestern states of India by early September. And by mid October it withdraws completely from the northern half of the peninsula and the withdrawal from the southern half of the peninsula is fairly rapid. See by early December the monsoon will be withdrawn from the rest of the country. The withdrawal takes place progressively from north to south from the first week of December to the first week of January. So that is all about this article discussion. In this discussion we saw what is monsoon. See it is derived from the word mausam which literally means season. It refers to the seasonal reversal in the wind direction during a year. And we saw that monsoons are experienced in the tropical area roughly between 20 degree north and 20 degree south latitude. and we moved on to see some of the factors influencing monsoon formation in india the first factor is pressure difference in the land and water due to differential heating and cooling of land and water the second reason is the shift of position of intertropical convergence zone in summer over the ganga plain the third factor is the presence of high pressure area east of madagascar over the indian ocean and approximately at 20 degree south latitude and the fourth factor is the formation of strong vertical air currents and the formation of low pressure due to intensive heating of tibetan plateau and final factor is the movement of westerly jet stream to the north of himalayas and the presence of tropical easterly jet stream over the indian peninsula during summer and we saw the entering the spread and retreat of monsoon see the duration of monsoon is between 100 to 120 days from early june to mid september It arrives at the southern tip of the Indian Peninsula by the first week of June. It has two branches: Arabian Sea branch and Bay of Bengal branch. The Arabian Sea branch moves to the north and it reaches the Saurashtra, Kutch, and the central part of the country. The Bay of Bengal branch it arrives in the Assam and it moves towards the west over the Ganga plains. See these two branches; they merge over the northwestern part of the Ganga plain. and they proceed to western uttar pradesh punjab haryana and eastern rajasthan and himachal pradesh and the rest of the country and finally we ended our discussion by seeing the withdrawal and retreat see the withdrawal begins in the northwestern states in the early september it is completely withdrawn from the indian peninsula by the end of december to first week of january now with these points in mind let us move on to the next part of the discussion that is the practice prelims question discussion today we have four prelims question i'll solve three of them and one of them is a quiz question for you let us solve this first question here it says consider the following statements coastal aquaculture is prohibited in a coastal regulation zone see this statement is incorrect now you might wonder We saw in our article discussion that coastal aquaculture is prohibited in coastal regulation zone, right? And it is true. It is prohibited in coastal regulation zone. 
but the statement here it does not mention under which regulation rule or legislation it simply says it is prohibited in crz it doesn't mention under which regulation or rule or legislation it is prohibited so it is a generic statement you cannot say it is correct see as per the crz notifications coastal aquaculture is prohibited but the coastal aquaculture authority act allows the coastal aquaculture beyond 200 meters from the high tide line in a crz area and it is also subject to registration see this we saw in our discussion itself as per the section 138 it is prohibited only within 200 meters from the htl which is high tide line so it is not prohibited beyond 200 meters in a crz area and then traditional coastal aquaculture is also permitted with registration since it is a generalized statement it is incorrect now coming to the second statement the coastal aquaculture authority is a statutory body headed by an incumbent or former judge of high court see this statement is correct as we saw in our discussion this coastal aquaculture authority is established under coastal aquaculture authority act 2005 its chair person is a person who is or has been a judge of high court in addition to the chair person it has 10 members one expert in the field of coastal aquaculture one expert in the field of coastal ecology nominated by the department of ocean development one expert in the field of environment protection or pollution control nominated by the ministry of environment one member to represent the ministry of agriculture one member to represent ministry of commerce four members to represent the coastal states on rotation basis and one member secretary and also know that the term of office of the chairman and every other member shall be 3 years so what did we find out we found out that statement 1 is incorrect and statement 2 is correct so what has the question asked the question has asked for the correct statements so the correct answer here is option b 2 only now moving on to the second question which one of the following statements are correct with reference to purchasing managers index statement 1 it is released only for the manufacturing sector this is incorrect because we saw in a discussion that it is released both for the manufacturing sector and for the service sector and the second statement here it says that pmi covers the broader industrial sector compared to the iip that is the index of industrial production see this statement is also incorrect both index of industrial production and the purchasing managers index monitor the level of activity in the economy but note that iip covers broader industrial sector compared to the pmi so it is given in the opposite manner here see pmi is more dynamic compared to a standard industrial production index so the correct answer to the question is option d neither one nor two Now coming to the third question consider the following statements with reference to the high court judges the high court judges are appointed under the hand and seal of the president this is true this we saw in our discussion itself the chief justice of high court and the high court judges are appointed by the president under the hand and seal of him now coming to the second statement high court judges can be removed by a motion passed by each house of the parliament by a simple majority this statement is incorrect because we need special majority to remove high court judges what is the special majority majority of total membership of the house and a majority of not less than 2/3 of the members present and voting so the correct answer to this question is option a one only Now moving on to the final question which is a quiz question for you with reference to the factors influencing indian monsoon which one of the following statements is not correct see it is very important to note here the question asked for the incorrect statements so option a differential heating and cooling of land and water option b shift of the position of intertropical convergence zone in summer over the ganga plain option c tibetan plateau gets intensely heated during summer and option d withdrawal of the tropical easterly jet stream over the indian peninsula during summer find the incorrect statement here and post your answer in the comment section so today we have no practice mains question we have only these four prelims questions try to find answer on your own for these questions and do not forget to attempt the quiz question and post your answer in the comment section with this we have come to the end if you find the video useful like share and comment and do subscribe to shankar as academy's youtube channel for further updates thank you